How a Queensland farmer who became a billionaire financier with a fleet of jets and rubbed shoulders with royalty was the first domino in a chain of financial disasters that brought down banking giant Credit Suisse. The shock collapse of huge century-old bank Credit Suisse can be traced back to an unlikely source, the cane fields of Queensland. The Swiss financier took a multi-billion dollar hit in 2021 when Greensill Capital spectacularly crashed after it ran out of cash. Scion of a prominent Bundaberg farming family, Lex Greensill lived large on his $6 billion company's success after rising from humble beginnings. He strode the world stage and counted among his senior advisors former Foreign Minister Julie Bishop and one-time British Prime Minister David Cameron. The 46-year-old was even invested as a commander of the Order of the British Empire by then Prince Charles in 2017 for services to business. But unknown to many of his investors, his company was playing a risky game of packaging up risky loans it made to clients and selling them to other firms like Credit Suisse. To provide security for this high-risk activity that convinced Credit Suisse to buy them, Greensill needed working capital insurance so if the loans defaulted the buyers would still get paid. But its strategy unraveled when its insurer, small Sydney firm The Bond and Credit Co., was bought out by Japanese heavyweight Tokyo Marine Management. Worried about the level of risk in Greensill's dealings and having learned the US$4.6 billion US dollars of coverage BCC gave it was above its risk limits, Tokyo Marine advised in July 2020 that it would cease insurance on March 1, 2021. Greensill scrambled to find another insurer but no one big enough would do it, and once the policy lapsed, Credit Suisse froze US$10 billion US dollars in funding. Without the Swiss bank's financial lifeline, Greensill crashed and burned within days, owing more than US$1 billion to creditors. Credit Suisse was able to claw back about US$7 billion US dollars of its investment but lost the rest, as did the bank's investors. The bank filed 18 insurance claims worth US$2.2 billion, US dollars, Tokyo Marine refused to pay up, claiming Greensill acted fraudulently by failing to disclose information. Just four weeks after Greensill went down, Credit Suisse lost US$4.7 billion US dollars in the collapse of American hedge fund Archegos. This was followed by a series of scandals, fines, and less substantial losses that cost the bank billions of dollars more. Credit Suisse will be bought out by rival UBS, with thousands of jobs at risk. Regulators were scathing in their criticism of how Credit Suisse dealt with Greensill, and its offices were raided to seize documents for investigations into the failed firm. Swiss regulators found the bank seriously breached its obligations and ignored concerning signs about its business model. A damning report by the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority, known as FINMA, found it had little knowledge and control over some of its dealings with Greensill. The bank used employees who were themselves responsible for the business relationship with Greensill and were therefore not independent to deal with critical questions or warnings, the report found. Credit Suisse even repeatedly asked Lex Greensill himself and relied on answers in his own statements. For these reasons, the bank made partly false and overly positive statements. The report's conclusion declared the bank seriously breached its duty to adequately identify, limit and monitor risks in the context of the business relationship with Lex Greensill over a number of years. Greensill's demise was a swift fall for a man who said his business was motivated by his own farming family's financial struggles, sometimes waiting years to be paid by creditors. Alexander David Lex Greensill was born in Bundaberg where his parents grew sugarcane, sweet potato and melons and he was expected to follow them into the family business. Instead, Greensill graduated from Kepnock State High School and studied law by correspondence through Queensland University of Technology. He got a job as a clerk with a local solicitor moved to Sydney and in 2011 he was off London where four years later he joined Morgan Stanley, then Citigroup. 
He served as a senior advisor to Cameron on supply chain finance and had an office at 10 Downing Street. He also once worked for U.S. President Barack Obama. Greensill had seen firsthand the impact late payments by retailers to his family and went out on his own in 2011, founding Greensill Capital, based in London. The company specialized in providing small and medium-sized businesses access to so-called working capital finance to run their day-to-day -day operations. This meant offering early payment to cover money due to be paid by bigger companies and government agencies. Greenhill would charge the businesses seeking early payment a fee of about 1% of the sum provided and it would be be paid in full by the supplier's customers when the invoices were settled. We unlock capital so the world can put it to work, its website stated. No other bank or financial services company has our passion and expertise. The company expanded quickly and Greensill Capital provided $143 billion worth of finance to more than 10 million customers in 165 countries. Greensill had offices in Sydney, London, New York, Chicago, Frankfurt, Johannesburg, Singapore, Bogota and Bremen with more than 800 global employees. I had big dreams and I'm obviously thrilled, but I would be lying if I said this was what I expected, Mr. Greensill told his local paper, the Bundaberg Newsmail, in 2019.